What is going on, YouTube? Welcome back to Fireside Rangers. I'm your host, Eric Wilson. Today, joined by my co-host, Anthony Rivardo, the OG. He's back to talk about Jack Roslovic with me today. The Rangers traded for him at the trade deadline, hoping to bring some life to that first line with Kreider and Mika Zibanejad. But here we are 15 games later, and it's been a slightly underwhelming stint so far for Roslovic with the Rangers. Um, as of today, at practice, he was scratched, so... Tonight's game against Montreal, likely not going to see Roslovic playing. Last game only had about seven minutes of time on ice. So Laviolette's kind of realizing that something's going on with Roslovic. And we're here today to discuss, did the Rangers make a mistake by trading for him? Shouldn't they maybe have gone for a bigger fish? Or are they just not using him in, in the right spot on the roster right now? But we're going to get right into that. But before we do, make sure you guys like, subscribe, ring that bell so you don't miss notification. If you're watching us on Apple or Spotify, be sure to give us a five-star review. Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. Do you think the Rangers made a mistake by trading for Roslovic, or are you happy with him so far? Lastly, be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms at Fireside Rangers. And before we really get into things today, Anthony, my friend, how are you doing? I'm doing great, man. It's good to be back. It's been a minute since I've been featured here on Fireside Rangers. A very long time, but my long awaited return has come. I am here to talk about the New York Rangers. Wish it was a little bit of a more positive topic, but hey, all in all, Rangers are sitting in a good spot, going to the postseason, already clinched. It's going to be fun, but they do have some lineup things to work out and iron out before they do get into the postseason. So I'm excited to go ahead and dive into this one and really excited to be back on the show. Of course, and I'm very happy to have you back. For all the fans out there that do miss their Anthony content, be sure to check out Fireside Giants where you can see him daily if you are a fan of the New York Giants. But let's get right into this Roslevic discussion, all right? First thing I want to talk about is I just want to put the rumors to rest right now because, you know, Rangers Twitter is probably freaking out. Roslovic not playing tonight, didn't play a lot last game. In my opinion, I think that's really just LaViolette resting his players. We've seen it in the past um, where Cooley was a healthy scratch and then Rempe has been in and out of the lineup recently. He's, he's letting a lot of his players rest. You know, there is still a lot on the line in the remaining five games of the season. Rangers obviously going for the President's Trophy, being the number one team in the NHL. They want to win the East, win the Metropolitan Division, at least with the Hurricanes right behind them. But, you know, at the end of the day, you do got to gear up for a playoff run. So in my opinion, I wouldn't really look too much into Roslovic being scratched tonight. Um, as I said before, last game against Detroit, he only had about seven minutes of time on ice. But Laviolette did comment on that. He said it had nothing to do with his performance and that the bottom six was just absolutely cooking that game. And he wanted to use them a little bit more. So I'm sure if you look at all the numbers of the players in the top six, probably a little less than usual besides, you know, your big stars. Rangers didn't really need to use Roslovic that much. But, I mean, that's just my opinion on tonight. I'm sure next game he'll be back in. But tonight... I, I wouldn't freak out about the fact that he's not playing, um, but I'm curious to know what your opinion is on that. I'm, I wouldn't freak out about it, but I, I think that when you're looking at the lines now, it looks like they're going to have Jimmy BC up on the first line with Zabana, Jed, and Kreider. I'm not freaked out by this, especially if you read into Peter Laviolette's quotes about it. He said, quote, there's been some really good games where they've been really noticeable and then said he doesn't want to read more into it in terms of what it's going to mean for the postseason. But I think more so than just resting the players, like you mentioned, Eric, I think he's just trying different line combinations to see what will work best in the postseason, what gels together the best, because they really only have a couple more weeks to kind of test these things and see who gels better with who. I think that's ultimately what he's trying to figure out here, see if there's any way to kind of shift the line pairings a little bit without making too too drastic of any changes, see if there's any better combination out there before they get to the postseason and it's too late to find that combination. So I think that's ultimately all this is. Don't know if it's really a big shocking surprise here. I think that we kind of expected Laviolette to continue to do these things and make lineup changes to prepare the team for the postseason. So this is expected, but I guess it doesn't really change, you know, or answer the big question of the episode of whether or not it was the trade was a mistake. Uh, I don't think that this indicates that it's a mistake, but you could argue based on the performance of the last 15 games, all that stuff that you could argue maybe uh, for the mistake. But right now, Laviolette making these changes, making Roslovic a healthy scratch, I don't think is anything to freak out about. Yeah, and then just aside from what's going on today with the roster and everything, I think the big problem that we're seeing so far that makes the Roslovic acquisition as underwhelming as it is, 
is because we brought him in and he had a pretty big job in front of him. You know, the whole season, Kreider and Zibanejad were struggling heavily. Um, LaViolette tried multiple different players up there on the first line with them. We saw a little bit of Kako, a little bit of VC. Even Will Cooley had a little bit of a stint up there on the first line. And really none of those players were able to get our top two guys on that first line going. So at when the trade deadline came around, that was pretty much our number one mission. Of, other than finding a center to replace Heedle, who was out for the season, we needed to bring in a top six winger who could play on the right wing and was going to wake Kreider and Zaban Jet up. Um, and since the Rangers have acquired Rosalik, I will admit Kreider been phenomenal. He seems like he's pretty much back, probably going to hit 40 goals again this season. But Mika Zibanejad is the really big problem for me. You know, he's our number one center. He's getting old. He's 30. But, you know, he's he's still supposed to be our top center guy. And Rosalvik really hasn't done anything to bring Zibanejad back to form. And I know it, that shouldn't be his only role. You know, he's his own player and he has his own job to do. But even in, in of that itself, he only has seven points in 15 games played with the Rangers so far. And when you have him being underwhelming a little bit and then the fact that Mika Zibanejad has gone five games now in a row without scoring a goal you know a guy who's known to be a pure goal scorer not scoring goals that's a really big problem with the playoffs less than two weeks away um so to me I think the question is did we make the right move by getting Roslovic and maybe we just got to tweak the lines a little bit or did the Rangers really miss out on going for a bigger fish and going after a guy like Jake Gensel who is a star himself and maybe could have just brought a whole new level of skill to that first line. So I think that is the really big question. In my opinion, um, I wouldn't say the Rangers made a mistake by trading for Roslovic. You know, I think he's a great role player and it's definitely going to help. It's kind of up to Zibanejad on his own to figure out what's going on and kind of just wake up and start scoring again. You know, you can't only score goals on the power play and expect to make it far in the playoffs. Um, but the only problem I see is what the Rangers have left. You know, Roslovic, if he's not the guy who's going to play on the first line, then who? You know, Kako, he's already tried, been tried up there multiple times this season, didn't work out. He succeeds much better in the bottom six on that third line. You know, you can try Jimmy VC. He's had some success up there. But then again, at the end of the day, he's really better fit as a fourth line role player. So it's kind of Roslovic or nothing right now. And that is a little bit concerning just because of how the first 15 games have went. But how do you feel about it? Well, in terms of whether or not they made a mistake, and I know you mentioned should they have gone for a bigger fish at, potentially at the trade deadline, you know that I was continuously advocating for being moderate at the deadline and not making any of those big splashes because I felt like that really disrupted chemistry last season, brought in almost had too many mouths to feed in the playoffs last year for the Rangers, and I still feel that way. I think that the Rangers did the right thing at the deadline. I think Chris Drury did a good job not sacrificing too many assets, not making any big plays. They made moves to kind of solidify these lines and improve the roster here and there, but they didn't make any of those splash moves, and I am still happy about that. And I don't think that trading for Roslovic was a mistake, and I think that he is ultimately the player that should be on the first line with those guys um, in Zabana, Jen, and Kreider during the postseason. I know that the production hasn't necessarily been there so far, but I think moving things around too much, making too many changes that could disrupt chemistry and timing and like you said vc not a first line guy he really is someone that you want on that fourth line i don't think that he's a player that i want permanently on the first line with Kreider and advantage at going into the playoffs so i don't necessarily think it was a mistake to trade for Rosovic. i think the process was correct maybe the results aren't what we wanted them to be but i always look at the process if the process checks out then I'll praise the move. And I think ultimately making that big splash play at the deadline wasn't the right decision for the Rangers. They didn't go that route. And I think that their process is what needs to be praised here. They were careful. They were timid at the deadline. They only made a couple moves to kind of fortify the roster rather than make any massive upgrades. And I like that. I think that it was well done. I'm not going to start criticizing it now just because 15 games in. And yeah, it's been a little bit disappointing of a performance from Roslovic and from the guys on the first line alongside him. But ultimately, I think that that was the right move for the Rangers at the time. And I still think it could pan out and become the right move. Now, you could probably pinpoint a few other guys around the league. Maybe they should have traded for this guy or that guy. Tarasenko, I know, is one that we kept throwing out there. And Vetrano, like those are guys that the Rangers maybe could have made different moves for. They stayed more firm and, and more careful at this deadline. And I think that was the right idea, the right process. And now maybe we're not getting the results that we wanted, but Still, it's only been 15 games. I know it's a 
large sample size and one perspective, but still some time here, a couple weeks left, and then playoffs. I think the Russell Vick should be on the first line, continue to play with those guys. They have had a few good performances. It hasn't been as consistent as we want it to be. But to pinpoint all that blame on Russell Vick and not say, hey, Zabanajed has been really hot and cold all season long, you know, that's more, you could argue, just a Zabanajed problem than it is a Russell Vick problem. So I, I think that's probably where I turn this around and ask you, Eric, how do you feel about that notion that maybe Russell Vick isn't necessarily the guy throwing off this first line? Maybe the first line just hasn't been as great. I mean, Zabanajed, Kreider, they're great players, but I think that Zabanajet has disappeared a few times this season, and I don't think that it's fair to just blame that on who's playing alongside him on the line. I think that he deserves his fair share of criticism and uh, responsibility for going hot and cold throughout the year. Oh, yeah. I mean, I 100% agree with pretty much everything that you said. You know, heading into the deadline, um, I, I, I was in the same um, point as you where I don't think the Rangers should have gone for a big star. I think Chris Jury definitely made the smart decision by just getting some depth role players and kind of just passing it off to our top players and kind of saying, all right, like we've got you the, the tools that you need to, to win. Now you need to wake up and start going. And a lot of them have, you know, Kreider, like I said before, has gotten it going. And I do, at the end of the day, agree that this is a Zibanejad problem. And that's the unfortunate thing is because um, – you know, we're both in agreement the Rangers didn't make a mistake for trading for Roslovic. But a lot of people out there in Rangers town, all over Twitter and social media, they are complaining about the fact that Mika Zibanejad hasn't been good and Roslovic is, is for some reason to blame for that. You know, I get we had a lot of expectations heading into the deadline. We need to acquire a player who's really going to get that first line going. And I think, you know, in a certain from a certain standpoint, Roslovic has done that, you know, playing with Kreider. Kreider has woken up Roslovic, even though he hasn't scored that many points, you know, seven points in 15 games played. That's pretty much a point every other game, you know, in a full season, you're averaging around 40 points, which isn't great for a top line player. But when you have a guy like Kreider, who's going to score 40 goals for you, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter that much. I fully agree. I think at the end of the day, this is a Mika Zibanejad problem. He is the one that needs to wake up get something going and it needs to happen right now. I know we were kind of expecting that later on in the season, he would finally just start to cook like he always does, but it really hasn't happened. Mika March didn't really happen. He went under a point per game and just really wasn't that good. And now there's only five games remaining in the regular season and he still hasn't gotten anything going. So yes, I think the lines do need to be tweaked a little bit, but it's a little late in the year to kind of just, really start to switch things up. You know, Laviolette had all season to kind of test things. And at the end of the day, he really hasn't. The lines have looked pretty much the same um, for a majority of the regular season. And I think that was the right move. Right now, it's just kind of a point where we need to just say, Roslovic and Kreider, do just keep doing what you're doing. Sure, it's been a little underwhelming, but the Rangers are still the number one team in the NHL. They're getting wins pretty much every game they've played. Only lost three games in the last two months or, or something crazy like that. Um, so yeah, I don't think the Rangers made a mistake for trading for Roslovic. I fully put all the blame on Zabanajad, and he is the player at the end of the day that needs to get something going. I'm in complete agreement with you. And for what it's worth, I think that he will. I think come postseason, once we get into the thick of it, I think Zabanajad's going to have the performances that we know he's capable of and that we need him to have. And I think that that's probably going to boost Roslovic's productivity as well. I mean, if Zabanajad starts scoring more points, that's probably more points for Rosovic on assists, maybe even goals. Maybe Zibanejad throws some assists out there. I think that once Zibanejad picks up his game, gets back into form, that's when everybody's going to finally feel comfortable with this move and be excited about what Rosovic is bringing to this team. Because, again, I don't think he's a bad player. I don't think it was a bad trade. The results haven't been there just yet. But, hey, he makes a clutch play in the postseason, and everybody's going to praise the move and be really happy about it. You know, that's, that's the reality of the game here. So I, I, I think we're in agreement on this one. Wasn't a bad move, not a mistake. It's really just Zabanajed needs to start stepping up here. He has those months where he just kind of disappears, and then he'll have Mika March, and all of a sudden he's an absolute superstar. And then, you know, in April he starts to slow down. So we just need to make sure that by the end of this month, when it's really important, he starts playing at his A game. And, again, I think that he will. And I think that Kreider, Zabanajed, and Rosovic is going to be a good first line for the Rangers. I think that no matter what, even if you haven't been crazy about the productivity of that line and or the production of that line, and then over the next few games, if VC goes in there and that line starts blowing up, 
I still don't want to see VC on the first line in the playoffs. I don't care how well they play over the next few games. I don't think that VC belongs on that first line. And I don't think that that's ultimately the right pairing and the right uh, kind of strategy for the Rangers to play into that playoffs. I think that it needs to be Roslovic on the first line and VC, even if he goes in there and provides a spark for a few games, that's fine. And I, I think that that's something that you can appreciate a player who can come up on the first line and provide a spark. But for being realistic about it long term, I don't see VC as the answer there. I think you're much better off having Rossovic stick it out, continue to build that chemistry, and hopefully make an impact in the postseason. But hey, maybe Laviolette sees it differently. I've been saying this all season long. I trust Laviolette. If Laviolette thinks that Rossovic is going to be a healthy scratch during the postseason and he wants VC on the first line, then screw it. I also want VC on the first line. You know, I, that's been my whole MO this season. I keep saying the Rangers on paper this year are not better than they were last year, right? I mean, they had a star-studded lineup last season, especially after the trade deadline. But I kept saying, I think this team is going to go further because of the coaching. I didn't like Gallant. I love Laviolette. I think the Laviolette is the truth here and the reason for the Rangers' success this season. The, the lineup hasn't changed all that much. You can argue that it is worse than last year's, yet they did way better, and they've exceeded all the expectations this season. To me, it's Laviolette. So whatever decision Laviolette decides here, whatever he makes, whether it's Roslovic or VC or somebody else moves up into the first line, I'll be in full support of it just because I trust that Laviolette is going to put these guys in position to succeed and actually have some success in the playoffs this season. Yeah, um, it's, it's kind of crazy just seeing how how successful the Rangers have been this season after losing stars. Kind of makes you wonder what Gallant was doing that whole time. <laughs> you know, it's like what, I've been what, saying, man. That's exactly it, man. That's what, what, I, it's Laviolette, dude. He's the difference. Yeah. So shout out to Laviolette. I mean, this season has been pretty incredible. Um, I know tonight, if the Rangers do pull out a big win, um, they will tie the franchise record for most wins in a season. And they, you know, they have five games to set a brand new record. So we'll be following that to make sure, um, see what's going on there. But I'm glad that we're in agreement. I have a feeling that a lot of people watching will agree with us, but some of you might not agree. So if whatever stance you're on in this subject, leave it down in the comment section below and let us know. But thank you all for watching. Well, I want to I want to dive right back in before we wrap and just I want to okay. point that out like you just mentioned Rangers might tie that franchise record they might break that record before season's end and on paper this roster is not as talented think about that that's incredible like Peter Laviolette at the end of the day needs to get his flowers that's coach of the year like people got to start giving him the respect and credit that he deserves I know he gets a lot of respect and credit but still I don't think that you could say enough great things about what he's done for this team and the, the moves that he's made. Even when we were saying, oh, it's so over, the Rangers are going to revert back to the norm and not be. I mean, just they've always found a way to keep pushing and winning games and stacking wins and being the top team in the NHL this season. This is a historically, you could argue, the greatest regular season Rangers team ever. And on paper, we lost the greatest player ever, arguably with Patrick Kane, American born player, right? Like we've lost all this talent. And even still, the Rangers are just a significantly better team. Got to give the credit to Peter Laviolette. So tying it into the Roslovic conversation, whatever, Peter Laviolette, I trust him. I'm hyped. I think this postseason is going to be a lot of fun. And Peter Laviolette is the man to give all of the credit to. Not all of it, but a lot of it to. You got to give at least half of it to Panarin as well. 100 points, all that. But <laughs> Peter Laviolette, man, I just want to get my point out there and say, I think this guy is the truth. And I'm really happy about what he's done for this team and really turned it around after a really disappointing exit from the postseason last year. I'm feeling confident in Laviolette's decision-making, and I think that whatever move he makes, I'm going to be happy with come postseason time. Oh, absolutely. Shout-out to Peter Laviolette. He really came in and saved this franchise, um, especially after last season. The Devils, just, we just turned that embarrassing defeat against the Devils into something beautiful that we're witnessing right now. And who knows if the Rangers finish the season strong, win the President's Trophy, even just win the East. Um he could very well be a finalist for the Jack Adams Award as Coach of the Year. I think he definitely deserves it. But um, I'm also, I'm very happy that in that discussion there, when you were talking about Patrick Kane, you threw in American Born because as soon as you started talking about greatest of all time, I'm like Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> but then I was said, talking a little too fast, almost messed up. Had to correct myself. <laughs> I was like, I can see the comments coming, coming through your head. There. But, that about wraps up today's discussion on Jack Rosovic and Peter Laviolette. <laughs> so thank you all for watching. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, ring that bell so you don't miss notification. Um, once again, leave your thoughts down in the comment section below on where you stand on the on the Laviolette and the Rosovic discussion. And be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms at Fireside Rangers. Have a good one and let's go Rangers.